Mavs fans, what's going on? Welcome into NBA Now from Chat Sports. I am your host, Jimmy Crowther, breaking down all the latest news and rumors surrounding the Dallas Mavericks. And the first rumor of the day is starting out with these potential new uniforms that have leaked on Twitter thanks to Tyler Adams. Now, I'll show you the jerseys here in just a minute, but the Mavs have already released a new court. Well, they haven't released it officially, but that was also leaked as well. They have the new court. They already have the new statement jerseys that are just the navy blue with the Mavericks across the chest. We already know the Mavericks' typical jerseys are just the white with the Dallas or the blue with the Dallas if they're on the road, whatever it may be. And now these new jerseys, thanks to at Tyler Adams on Twitter, you can give him a follow. He's always got all the best jersey leaks for the Dallas Mavericks, are floating around Mavs. Twitter. Now, I'm going to show you a picture here in just a second. Here's what they look like. They've got the graffiti lettering of the Dallas Mavericks across the front. It just says Mavs. They've got a blue gradient going down the front. I don't know if you've seen the Utah Jazz jerseys that have the orange gradient. Sort of similar there. Neon green uh, striping and then the blue, of course, for the Mavs. Now, these jerseys are meant to represent Deep Ellum in Dallas, which is a part of the Arts District. So kind of going with the artsy feel, the graffiti lettering, which also the Brooklyn Nets did as well. And again, these are to match this court that has apparently come out for the Dallas Mavericks. It looks the exact same. Just if you put the court and put it on a jersey, this is kind of what it look, would look like. And as a Mavs fan, I actually got kind of excited about th these because here's the deal. The Mavs have had the same boring uniforms for so long. The same Dallas across the front. It's always the navy blue and the white. There's never really a lot of interest. We wanted the green back. Now this green's a little different than what I think some Mavs fans wanted. But hey... I applaud the Mavs for going for it. It's a different look. I think they will really pop on the court. So I think they're okay. I'm actually a fan of these. I tweeted out, call me crazy, but I love these jerseys and a lot of Mavs fans called me crazy. So I think there's two opposite ends of the spectrum here. You either love these jerseys or you hate these jerseys. So as a Mavs fan, maybe you're just another NBA fan watching this episode. Do you love the Mavs new jerseys or do you hate them? Type L for love, type H for hate. Now, of course, I'm going to wait to really see if I see them on the court to know if I love or hate them. But as of right now, I, I think I do like them a lot because I think it makes a statement. I think it's interesting. I think the Mavs are really going for something different for once with these new uniforms. Now, Mavs fans, before we get into the rest of our rumors for today's show, I want to tell you about Bet DSI. You can go to chatsports.com slash bet and use our promo code for NBA fans. You go to NBA120, enter that for the promo code Bet DSI is going to hook you up with a 120% deposit bonus when you place your first bet with Bet DSI. So again, that link is chatsports.com slash bet and then enter the promo code NBA120. You can start betting on Mavs games, NBA games, college football games, NFL games, whatever it is. Start making some money today with chatsports.com slash bet. The Bet DSI, that's our ad partner here. Now, let's get into Kristaps Porzingis. Look, he has struggled a little bit. There have already been some stats coming out from New York fans. They're already just trying to butcher this guy for what he's done so far this year. And we got to talk about the struggles that he is facing because his numbers overall look good, but there are some problems. Like, for example, Porzingis is averaging 16.3 field goal attempts this year. Now, that's a lot of field goal attempts. Obviously, he deserves a lot because he is the second best player on this Mavs team. However, he's shooting just 40.1% from the field. That is not a good number for a big man, and he's also just shooting 68.4% from the free throw line. That's not a good number either because he's a good shooter. There's no reason he should be shooting below 75% from the free throw line. So these are definitely some signs of struggles for Porzingis. The numbers are there, but the efficiency just hasn't really caught up yet. Look, I'm giving the guy a break. I, I'm addressing this because this is what people are freaking out about. I'm not that worried because here are what Porzingis' numbers look like as a whole. 18.3 points per game, 7.9 rebounds, 2.4 block shots per game, and he's still shooting the ball 37.5% from beyond the three-point arc. So these quote-unquote struggles that everyone's freaking out about really in the bigger picture are not that big of a struggle because he's putting up good numbers. Now, if you look side by side, his best game and his worst game so far as a Dallas Maverick they, they really are a big difference. Now, these are best and worst games based on points. Against Boston, he had four points. He had five rebounds, one block shot, one assist, and he only made one three-pointer that game. It was not a good outing for Kristaps Porzingis. However, when you look at his best scoring game as a Maverick, he played the Portland Trailblazers really well. 32 points, just picked them apart. Nine rebounds, two block shots, five assists, which is a great number to see from KP is that he's passing the ball well too. And he shot the ball 30% from three. Now, 
He also had a really good game against the Knicks. That's where he blocked five shots. So he has great games. He had one terrible game. He's had some off nights, but I think he's just getting the rust off. He hasn't played basketball in a year and a half. Give the guy a break. And now I want to focus on the positives here of Kristaps Porzingis because there are a lot of positives about this seven foot three unicorn. There are only three players in the entire NBA that are averaging at least 18 points, seven rebounds, and two block shots per game. Per game. And here are those guys. Anthony Davis of the Los Angeles Lakers. He's putting up 26.6 points, 10.2 boards, three blocks. Great numbers. I mean, Anthony Davis is probably a top five player in the league so far this year. He has looked absolutely amazing. Andre Drummond of the Detroit Pistons. Now, he's had to do more because Blake Griffin is just now getting back from his injury. But so far, he's been averaging 20.3 points per game, a, an insane 17 and a half rebounds per game, two blocked shots for Andre Drummond of the Detroit Pistons. And then, of course, you have Kristaps Porzingis. He's still putting up the 18 points, the eight rebounds, the two blocked shots. But here's the difference with Porzingis and those other two guys. Anthony Davis, 28% from three so far this year. That's not good. You don't want to rely on an Anthony Davis three-pointer. Andre Drummond hasn't made a three this year. He's 0% from beyond the three-point arc. Porzingis, he's shooting 37.5%. So there is no one in the NBA that can block shots, score points, grab rebounds, and shoot the three as well as Porzingis can do all four of those things together. So... I am not that worried about Kristaps Porzingis. We are 10 games in to an 82 game season and five years of Kristaps Porzingis on this team. But I'm gonna ask you guys, how worried are you about Kristaps Porzingis? Just let me know your worried level in the comment section below. Maybe you're not that worried like me. Maybe you're super worried. If you're super worried, I tell you, get over it. He's gonna be just fine. Now, speaking of Porzingis, the Mavs are playing his former team, the New York Knicks. It's going to be a great matchup. This is the first time the Mavs will be traveling to New York this season. Look, the Knicks so far, 2-9 and nine this season. They went into the offseason with big expectations. They came out with 17 different power forwards on their roster. Uh, not really a great start to the year for the Knicks. However, one of those two wins is against the Dallas Mavericks. So that's something to keep in mind for Mavs fans. Now, let's get back to Porzingis here for just a second. Of course, he was drafted by the Knicks back in 2015, booed on draft night, and then immediately became the savior of that franchise. And then he turned his back on the franchise and came to Dallas. Now, this will be his first time, as I mentioned, back in Madison Square Garden. You can expect some heavy, heavy boos for KP there. Now, in the last game against the Knicks, this is what KP did. 28 points, 9 rebounds, 5 block shots, and of course, he went 4 of 8 from beyond the 3-point arc. I mean, I said before that the Portland Trailblazer game was probably Porzingis' best game as a scorer, but his best overall game definitely came against the Knicks. And if I was a betting man, which first of all, I'd be using Bet DSI, but second of all, I'd be betting that Porzingis comes out swinging against the Knicks in Madison Square Garden. I think he's going to have a huge night for the Knicks. Now, let's talk about someone on New York side, Dennis Smith Jr. It has been in just a really, really tough year for the former Dallas Maverick point guard. Of course, he was drafted by the Mavs, ninth overall in 2017. He had an insane rookie year, broke all kinds of Mavs rookie records. And then his sophomore year, Luka Doncic comes in, Dennis Smith Jr. gets shipped out, KP comes in. Now Dennis Smith is with the Knicks and it just has not been pretty. This will be his first time playing his former team as he did not play in that recent game against the Knicks due to a death in his family, which is really tough to see for a guy who's already struggling on the court. You hate to hear anything negative going on off the court. Now, his stats really just speak to just how much Dennis Smith Jr. has been struggling so far. 0.8 points per game, 1.3 assists, 0.8 rebounds, and uh, that field goal percentage is not a typo, folks. He's shooting 7.1% from the field. It has not been a good year for DSJ. And he's really not even expected to start. In the last game, the Knicks started Frank Nilakina. They started Taj Gibson, Julius Randle, Marcus Morris, and of course, RJ Barrett, the rookie sensation, who is really good for the Knicks. But that's the starting five. Dennis Smith Jr. is already getting pushed out. Now, this is who I expect to start for the Knicks because this is who started against the Mavs last game. And of course, the Mavs, this is what they had last game against the Knicks. They went with Luka Doncic at the point. Courtney Lee got the starting position at the two guard. Dorian Finney-Smith was the three. And then KP and Dwight Powell at the four and the five. I don't think Courtney Lee will start this game against the Knicks, but that is who started last game. So you never know what you might see. Now, 
final question of the day, a very important one. Who are you picking in this rematch between the Knicks and the Dallas Mavericks? Type K for Knicks, type M for Mavs. I think you all know who I'm going with. I think the Mavs will have a huge bounce back game against the Knicks. I think Chris Stapps Porzingis will go off for 25 plus points, block a ton of shots, and really show out against his former team. Now, Mavs fans, before you watch this game against the New York Knicks, you got to go download the My TV Choice app. Really, it's really simple. You go to chatsports.com slash my TV, download that My TV Choice app, and then sync it up with your smart TV, and you won't have to watch commercials during the Mavs and Knicks game. During any live sporting event, instead of commercial breaks, they're going to take you to great chat sports videos during those breaks and then get you back to the game. So again, that's chatsports.com slash my TV. Go download the My TV Choice app today.